Hey you guys, how you doing? Solar Steve back at you with a final video on the Grid Tide Array. And I picked it today to do this video because it is the spring equinox today. And really all that means is that's the point in time when the sun is directly over the equator. Um, summer solstice is going to be the longest day of the year and that's when the sun in the northern hem hemisphere is at its uh, most northerly uh, declination. So this is one of the one of the benchmarks I do every year. Uh, there's four of them. I do it at the equinoxes and I do it at the solstices. And uh, I pick those days to keep my data logging just so I can really keep track of uh, how the system is performing. So those of you that have seen my other videos on this system uh, are basically familiar with what I've done, but I'm just going to run it down real quick because this will be the balance of system uh, that I'm sure all you are curious about. So string one was the original string, and this is composed of 16 185 watt uh, Mitsubishi electric uh, uh, polycrystalline panels. And um, basically in this configuration, they're all wired in series producing voltage at maximum power at 390.4 volts. And uh, this was the first one that I did back in October of 08. And it's got a nameplate uh, wattage of 2,960 watts. Of course, that's nameplate at standard temperatures and conditions. So in the real world, you really don't see those numbers. Um, and we'll get into that here in just a minute. Now, a year ago, oh, before I get to that, here's where you can see where the, the junction box is and the conduit then wraps around and goes down to the inverter, which we'll also get to in just a second. But Unirac solar mount kit with splice bars fully grounded. You can see the grounding right there. And so everything is very adequately grounded. We used uh, Sikaflex um, marine adhesive sealant on the L feet. That came highly recommended down in Sol Solfest. And I have to admit, I have never had a leak problem whenever I've used that stuff. So uh, excellent product. But uh, I had to get it online because nobody in town stocked it. But just a view of the underside of the panels, the J boxes, and all of the string wiring that goes along with it. It's really slick. These particular panels are really slick because they use these um, solar line uh, SL2 connectors. And you just push them together and they lock. They're waterproof, uh, corrosion proof, and uh, the panels came like that. So I never had to worry about terminating any of the wires here and that made for a really nice and easy install. Okay, now, um, back a year ago, like I said, and I made it a point to have this done by last uh, spring equinox, I added these panels. I bought them used from a gentleman up in Oregon. Believe it or not, I found him on Craigslist. And uh, he was a property owner up there and he had just bought it and all of these panels and uh, all the equipment was there, and so he decided to sell it. So for $400 a piece, I was able to buy one of these, buy these panels. These are Kyrocera 158Gs, and they're rated at 158 watts a piece at STC. And when you total the string together, it comes up with 2,012 watts with a voltage at maximum power point of 324.8 volts DC. Now some of you out there are saying, hey Steve, um, don't you think you're going you're to have a problem with a voltage mismatch between the strings? Well, yeah, that's about a 60 volt discrepancy. And uh, I was aware of that. Um, I think my net gains outweigh the D rating that the lower voltage caused to this string. Uh, but we'll talk about that more in just a minute. Um, these are a discontinued panel now. They're actually about five years old, but they are also a, a, a polycrystalline uh, panel. 
and you can see under these guys that I did have to terminate myself. Um, there were wires coming out of it, so I didn't have to mess with the junction box, uh, but they didn't have the really slick connectors that the other panels did. So what I did, you can see that uh, there are wire nuts there, but what I did is I twisted the wires together, got them hot with a torch, and tinned them over with solder. Then I packed um, uh, grease in the wire nut and finally wire nutted it on and then taped over the end. So I really don't think I'm going to have any kind of uh, connection problems, uh, arcing or corrosion moisture problems. I would really be surprised if that happened after all of those steps. But here you can really see a good shot of one of the L feet Sika flexed in. You know, uh, I, I just can't say enough about that product. It is just absolutely awesome. And it's J Box here that continues on down uh, to the inverter. Now, one thing I want to tell you guys about if any of you guys try this stuff on your own, which I encourage you to do. Um, there isn't anything terribly difficult about this, but this is one of the things you're really going to want to pay attention to, and that is the grounding. Um, it's really important, um, especially if you're looking at lightning protection, uh, any kind of maybe, a, heaven forbid, an EMP problem. Uh, what you've got to have a place for those power surges to go, and if you don't have an adequate grounding on your system, uh, you're going to start popping stuff. Now this is number six bare copper and uh, using uh, proprietary lugs that uh, Unirac makes uh, in order to complete the grounding circuit at each point that you see here. And then it goes down and around and finally connects over here to this string. So everything is completely grounded off to each other. And that's very important. So all total, when you consider the sum total of both strings, we have a nameplate wattage at STC of 5,172 watts. Um, but when we get down to the inverter, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you why I don't think I'm going to get that much power uh, and in fact show that I in fact don't. Um, of course that was foreseeable to me and uh, I'm not completely worried about it. There are some other efficiency issues that we'll talk about in just a second. So uh, here's part one, part two coming up, stay tuned.